Mark the ninth chapter. We'll be turning this evening in the 14th verse. Mark the ninth chapter in verse number 14. And again, what so good to see everybody in the house of the Lord on this Sunday evening. I'm grateful for amen, the worship that is again in this house. But we have come to magnify the Lord and exalt His name together. Amen. Together we've come to magnify Mark the ninth chapter, verse 14. When he had came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, the scribes questioning with them, and straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with him? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, he said, I have brought unto thee my son which hath a dumb spirit and whatsoever he taketh him he teareth him and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away and spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out talk to the disciples about it they they could they could not do it couldn't could not do it and he answered him and said oh faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed or foaming. And Jesus, while his son is on the ground foaming and tearing himself, Jesus asked his father a question. He said, how long is it ago since this came unto him? The father responded and said, of a child. And oft times it hath cast him into fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, if you can do anything, have compassion on him and help him. Have compassion upon him and help him. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto them, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him, and he was as one dead, insomuch that many said he was dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why cannot we cast him out? He said unto them, This kind come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. The child is wallowing and foaming. The spirit is tearing him. Jesus asked the father a question. He said, how long has it been with him? The father responded and said, of a child. The father said in the 22nd verse, something I believe is powerful and that we're going to go to tonight. He said, if you can do anything, And help us. Have compassion on him. And help us. I want to minister on this subject tonight. Just have compassion. Just have compassion. Let's pray together. Father, I love you. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness and mercy tonight. Praise you, Lord, for how good you've been, how merciful you've been, how kind you've been, how long-suffering you've been to us. you would touch us in this house. Let someone feel your love, your power, your compassion in this building. Lord, 
Lord, we thank you and we praise you for it all. In the precious name of Jesus, amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated this evening. We have read it and it is recorded in Mark, the ninth chapter. to and highlighted in many of your Bibles as the healing of a demoniac child or boy. We've read and, and studied and seen that the reason that this gentleman comes with his son to Jesus is he's already tried his disciples. His disciples he approached and for whatever reason, according to Jesus at the bottom part of that portion of Scripture, he said, Things of this nature don't just happen. Things of this nature only come by prayer and fasting. In other words, if you're not willing to pay the price, then you're not going to see the miracle. Because you can't worship your way through everything. You can't praise your way through everything. Sometimes you got to pray and fast and seek the face of God. So they had already approached his disciples, and now they, he finds himself approaching Jesus. Jesus has always got a multitude of questions. He always had the answers, but now one approaches him and says, if, if you can help us, and I've got a son that for a while now, he throws himself into the fire. I've got a son for a while now that casts himself into the water. I can only imagine being a parent of a child that, being around a body of water, you didn't know whatever moment or time it would just jump in and try to take its own life, that spirit that that father had identified. Or around a fire, that child would jump into the fire, just that spirit trying to wreak havoc upon that child. And can you imagine what these parents must have faced, what these parents must have witnessed, and what these parents must have felt like in their own minds and in their own spirits of having to constantly day in and day out watch this child not from just the normal everyday terrors that may come his way but by those that were inflicted upon him by a spirit that had entered him Jesus asked him how long this spirit had been with him and he said the father said of a child and as I read this today I thought the father evidently knew this son before the spirit had entered because he identified it and said he was he was a child. I remember him before it entered and he didn't act this way. But something happened. Something came in our son and it caused him to foam and tear himself. Tear himself to the point that he was lifeless, laying on the ground and many thought he was dead. But Day in and day out, this father and mother dealt with the tragedy of a son that had a spirit that had plagued his body. Of a child, it was a small child that this spirit had entered. It's very important that our children be raised in the house of God. It's very important that our children not make long-lasting decisions as a child, but that the mother and father protect them in bringing them to the house of God. They don't want to come. Bring them anyhow. They don't want to worship. We'll tell them to stand and sing anyhow. They don't want to pray. We'll have them pray with you and teach them how to pray. Of a child in the world today, in the spirit of our society, is wanting to get our generation at a very young age. They want to destroy our children. They want to wreak havoc upon our children. They want to see them lost and undone without any hope and without any joy in their lives. And they get them ever how they can get them. I'm not preaching against you. I'm preaching for you tonight. And whatever device it is that's trying to destroy your children, you'd be better off getting rid of the device than saving your children than taking your chances with the things of the world. 
doesn't matter if it's a television show or it's a video game or it's a telephone. If it changes the attitude of your child, be careful because there are spirits that are identified with all three and many more that are above. Satan does nothing more want to but to kill, steal, and destroy. Our children need to be introduced to the Holy Ghost at a very young age. They need to see a manifestation of God at a very young age. This church ne never needs to let the fire go out. There needs to be adults that say the fire is never going out in my life and I won't allow the fire to go out in this church. There always need to be a man or a woman that will praise and magnify God. There always need to be a man or a woman that will find prayer time before the service. There always need to be a man or a woman that has seen praises of God as loud as you can sing them. Please, those of you that are being seated and those of you that are standing, please don't let the fire go out in this church. There are children depending upon you. There are children depending upon your worship. There are children depending upon your praise. There are children depending upon your faithfulness to the house of God. Don't ever let the fire go out. I wish somebody clap your hands like you believe it tonight. Clap your hands like you believe it tonight. Our children need more than fellowship with us. They need fellowship with God. They need more than us talking about sporting events. They need to hear us talk to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Our children need more than entertainment. They need to see musicians and singers sing and play under the unction and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. They need to see exactly what they see in this local congregation, whether they want to see it or not. They want to stay home. They're a child. Bring them to the house of God anyway. And let them see men run around the building and praise the Almighty God. Let them see men wave handkerchiefs in the air and dance under the power of the Holy Ghost because if we keep them in the presence of God, the enemy has got to take his hand off of our children. If we can just keep them in the presence of God, the enemy won't wreak havoc upon upon our children. Our children. Our children is the, is the new convert. I know some thought it was the four and five and six year olds. It is them as well, but it's the new convert. The new converts that have come to praise and magnify the Lord, but they're babes in Christ. They don't understand it all. They don't all the worship and all the praise, but he said he'd come in as, as a child. He told Jesus, he said, if you can do anything for us, have compassion on us and help us. In other words, you probably already know when it came in and why it came in and doesn't give you the history of this family, but Jesus knows all things. And yet he is a perfect gentleman in, in displaying compassion to us. He knows why we're in the shape we're in from time to time. Yet he does not judge us. He helps us. Aren't you thankful tonight that Jesus didn't judge you, but that he helped you? The new convert of the Pentecostal Lighthouse should be the greatest celebrated child we have among us. That one that was baptized the day, it should never get old when someone is baptized in the precious name of Jesus Christ. God help me tonight. Some folks would have rather gone to lunch than stay for a baptism today because it wasn't their daughter or their son. Let us never get to the place that we become so selfish and so self-centered and we don't have any compassion and we don't want to help nobody that we're worried more about our lunch rather than somebody being baptized in the name of Jesus. Well, when I can see it, I'll stay and watch it. Doesn't matter if you can see it or not. Just her hearing somebody clap their hands and praise God because it had happened was all that somebody needed to hear. You want to do something for the kingdom of God? Have compassion on somebody. 
care about somebody when they're walking through something. Rejoice with somebody when they have a victory. Just because you're not having a victory doesn't mean someone else can't have a victory. Your victory is going to come. Your answer is on the way. But when some new convert gets a victory over something that to you seems so small, you ought to rejoice with them. You ought to praise God with them. You ought to have compassion on them. You shouldn't look at them and say, well, when you get to my point, I'll praise God with you. No, when that soul is baptized, a church ought to rejoice and magnify God and praise the awesome, wonderful name of Jesus. The Bible tells us that in heaven all the angels rejoice over one sinner, over one child, one child that says, forgive me, Lord. One, all of heaven rejoices over one sinner that asks for God's forgiveness, and God forgives them. If all of heaven rejoices over one that asks for repentance, then the church ought to be celebrating over one that asks for repentance and one that is baptized in Jesus' name and one that is filled with the Holy Ghost and one that comes to church one time a week and one that begins two times a week and one that ends up coming three times a week and one that wants to come and pray one or two nights a week. The church ought to rejoice over that child and have a little compassion and help them along the way. I, I, don't, I don't understand all the ins and outs of the chapter of 14 through 29. Can't tell you what age the child was when the Spirit came in him. The father could co probably could tell us a lot more about it if he were here, but he told Jesus. He didn't tell Jesus, let me tell you my story. Let me tell you all my mistakes. Let me tell you where I've been. Let me tell you where I did wrong. Let me tell you what I let him watch or what I let him get involved with. And when I knew this spirit came in, no, he just said, if you can help us, please have compassion. We just need, we just need some help. I mean, you know, I, I, I've been asked the story, and there's some folks that may know the story, and there's people always judging me in my condition and always saying, well, if they'd have done this, that wouldn't have happened. If they'd have done that, that wouldn't have happened. But, Jesus, we just really need some compassion right here because we are weak we, we know we might have made some wrong turns and made some wrong decisions, but we can't even go to the lake without him casting himself in the lake. We can be in the line waiting to pay at a department store, and he just falls out, and he wallows at the mouth and foams at the mouth and, and tears himself and all that. And we, just, we, we just need some relief. They're at the point of just having a, a physical nervous breakdown. If you can help us have compassion on us, we, we need someone that cares enough about us not to just look at and judge us and say, well, if you'd have made that turn, this wouldn't have happened. If you'd have done that, that wouldn't have happened. If you'd have put that on, this wouldn't have happened. If you'd have took that off, this wouldn't have happened. If anybody in this building tonight believes in holiness, I believe in holiness, but I don't believe you're going to talk somebody through it. I believe the Spirit of God is going to lead somebody through it. Praise the Lord. So that doesn't mean when we get the Holy Ghost, we have the spiritual authority to clean everybody up. What it means is when we get the Holy Ghost, we become like Jesus. And what Jesus did was he extended compassion and he extended help to somebody. If you can't pray for somebody because they don't look just like you, you don't have compassion. If you can't worship beside somebody because they haven't showed up and done just like you've done, then you don't have compassion. If the only time you can pray with someone is when they've told you all their deep dark sins you don't have compassion compassion it comes forth when you don't know their background compassion comes forth when you don't know where they've been compassion don't ask questions compassion brings help Can I tell somebody tonight, there's help for somebody in this room tonight. You might have messed up your life. You didn't come tonight to tell your story. You come tonight to ask God for forgiveness. And there's a, there's a, there's a church full of people that is waiting and willing to rejoice with you. We don't have to know your failures. We just want to hear God say you're forgiven. We don't have to know where you came from. We just want God to change your life. some help right here. We we need some compassion. We we need a little bit of help. How many people walk through the church doors across America 
And the only thing they're looking for is some compassion. They're not going to be able to tell you what songs were sung. They're not going to be able to tell you the songwriters and who wrote them. Many of them that walked through for the first time that don't even listen to praise and worship and southern gospel and gospel and whatever else labels you put on it. They don't listen to Christian music. They just got tired of living a life that was tearing them. Tired of living a life that would throw them in the water or throw them in the fire. Tired of, of, of dealing with all the demonic thoughts and all the oppression and depression and, and all the suicide thoughts that the devil places in their minds and they come to the house of God because they found a church card on a table or in a restaurant or somebody shook their hand and invited them to the house of God. Or maybe they stumbled across the Pentecostal Lighthouse Facebook page and, and they looked up the address and they come and some of them may know you and some of them don't know nobody in the building. And when they walk in, they're not impressed with our preaching. They're not impressed with our singing. They're not impressed with our musicians. What impresses them is is I need some compassion and I need some help. We gotta get we gotta get out of the impressing business and get into the compassion and the helping business. We gotta we gotta get out of this thing. Well, man, we sound good and don't we look good? And man, isn't my sermon good? Your sermon is no more good than the compassion you're ready to give when somebody walks down to an altar. If you preach a 45-minute sermon, but you can't pray but three minutes with somebody that walks to an altar, all you are is sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. We need somebody in these last days that it gives somebody a help and extend compassion. 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 I know this is elementary for some of you and then for others that are here tonight it's way over your head. So if you really think in your mind that when you become what the world, the world today identifies as a Pentecostal, you do this and you do this and you do this and you do this and you do this. And we got a lot of ritual things that we do lined, lined up. But my question tonight to the body of Christ in general is, is compassion on the list? We're firm in our doctrine. We're firm in the plan of salvation. There is but one way to be baptized, and that is in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't have to tell it with a red face. You don't have to tell it with your fist balled up in the air. You don't have to tell them their great granddaddy who did the best he could and went straight to hell. Well, I'm going to preach it whether you say amen or not, so it just makes it better if you say amen. It's, it's, not, it's not about us being right and everybody else being wrong. It's about people are walking through these doors just like we were when we came through these doors. Whether you want to admit it or not, you needed help. Whether you, whether you want to stand up and go that far back, whether I want to admit it or not, there's times right now I need help. There, there's days that, that I feel like I just need some help. I just need somebody to have a little bit of compassion. I know I fail, faltered, and I know I failed, and I know I've not done what I should do, but there's just sometimes somebody needs to pick me up and not tell me what I should have done. They just need to pick me up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can I tell you, in the year 2024, it's already happening. We've already baptized one the first Sunday of our new year, and there are more to come. When people get baptized in the name of Jesus, they get excited about what God has done in their life. And I looked at that young lady today, and she left the house of God. She had a smile on her face. This is all public knowledge. She went home, and she listened. She wrote a paragraph, four or five paragraphs, and placed it on her business Facebook page and people begin to share it. She said, man, I went down one creature, but I came up new in Christ Jesus. And, and I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I know. I know by the apostolic lingo and, the, and the many, the, not, not here, but by the stiff collared folks, they may look and say, oh, she's got to do this and oh, she's got to do that and oh, 
when she gets here, she'll really be effective. Can I tell you, she's going to be effective now because somebody extended a, a hand of help. Come on, when you see me fall, don't ask me why I'm down there. Just pick me up. When you see me fall, I told my wife the other night, I said, I'm so proud of Brother Stephen Howe. I'm so proud of him, I don't hardly know what to do. There was a time a year or so ago or more that I thought when he went through a situation, I thought he quit. I'm going to tell you, as his pastor, I didn't think he'd make it. And he stumbled on back into the church house. He come in here and he praised the name of Jesus. And he glorified the name of Jesus. And he didn't stop. I said he just plainly didn't stop. And I'm going to tell you why. Because he had some people around him that didn't have to know where he'd be. And they just picked him back up. And they said, come on, Brother Stephen. Just keep on praising God. Come on, Brother Stephen. Just keep on magnifying God. We could have preached about the walls falling down flat. And we'd have shouted. We could have preached about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego not burning up in the fire. And we would have shouted. We could have preached about Daniel in the lion's den. And we would have run around this building. We could have talked about the man that saw the cloud about the size of man's hand. And everybody would have danced. But we need to get back to dancing when somebody's willing to get up. We need to get back to dancing when somebody don't stay down. We need to get back to running when somebody won't quit. I refuse to quit. I'm going to get up. I refuse to give in. I'm going to get up. I refuse to throw in the towel. I'm going to get up. Compassion. 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 Somebody shout compassion. I believe in holiness as much as anybody in this room believes in holiness. Amen. Taught my children for all their all their life. Check yourself before you go out the doors of the house. It's followed them even in the marriage. Check yourself. You represent Jesus Christ first, then your family, then your church family. I believe in holiness, but holiness without compassion is not holiness. It's self righteousness. Well, glory to God. And there's a difference between self-righteousness and holiness. Amen. Praise God. All right. Uh-huh. Say what? Oh, yeah. It's the truth anyhow. You don't like the way she looks? That don't mean you got to bypass her. Man, you ever looked at somebody that's supposed to been in the church for a few years that by now should have should have got something? Man, if you stay at Walmart long enough, you're gonna have something in the cart. They should have had something by now, but they ain't worshiping God and not praising the Lord. When do you have you ever slipped over there and said, "Get up, praise the Lord"? No, you don't do that. And if we don't do that, why? If somebody doesn't look like we think they ought to look. Do we think we have the right to go to them and say, well, if you get rid of this, God would do this. And if you get rid of that, God would do that. What if they look back at you and said, and if you get rid of that self-righteous spirit, <laughs> you say, what is all, this is pre preventing maintenance for this church. That's all it is. In 2024, God's going to fill this building up. Look around you tonight. It's almost filled on a Sunday night. I don't know what we're going to do in the future, but God knows what we're going to do in the future. And until God busts out these walls or does something across the street, we're going to keep baptizing people in Jesus' name and keep watching them get the Holy Ghost. There's going to be some more Brother Stevens come that say, I ain't quitting. I don't care if you don't like me, I ain't quitting. I don't care if you want to know my story and just to make fun of me, I'm not going to quit. Compassion, compassion. Would somebody help me? The best way you can help me is just be in my area and praise the Lord. Don't ask me a bunch of questions. Just be in my area. Just, just, just help me by being there. If you see me fall, pick me up. Amen. But Brother 
Christine, would you come here tonight and help us just a minute? Would you come here tonight and help us just a minute? bad. That's how it's supposed to go. When, when, you, when you fall, he just get back up. I didn't mean to do that. That's what he said. I didn't mean to do that. He didn't do it. I just fell. Nobody's fault. That's where we get mixed up with this thing. We got to find out who's at fault. Well, I wonder why they're down there. What does it matter? I wonder why they're tearing themselves. What does it matter? Wonder why to keep jumping in the water and keep jumping in the fire. What does it matter? There's somebody that needs a little bit of help. Can I tell you what? If the church can't help people, let's get rid of the music, close the doors, tell the building, and go do something else. If the church ain't going to help the lost, let's just shut it down and, and turn this place into a nightclub and sell it to somebody that'll do something else with it because the church was put here on this earth not to be self-righteous. The church was put here to have the mind and the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ. He said, just give me a little compassion. Just help us out a little bit here. Just help me out a little bit a bit here. I just need some help. I just need some help. Would you look at somebody and tell them, I'm going to help you. I, I'm going to help you. I'm not going to be a hindrance to you, but I'm going to help you. I mean, it's plain and simple. I know. I know we're online, but I mean, sometimes we worry about everybody online. And there's, I hope the Lord help with them this week. We just, I mean, they, we try to worry about everybody watching online. Listen, if they wanted to be here and they're in this city, they should have been here. I've heard I, people text me all the time, Brother Garnett, I can't hear you online. Come to church. Come, come to church. I'm not talking about folks that used to be in Arkansas and people can't get here, but people that's just a few miles away that just want to lay back in the recliner and just and click from one service to another to find out what's going on. I need you here. I, I need you here because I may fall. <laughs> I hope y'all, I hope y'all get it. For the night's over. It's just gonna be. Sometimes it just happens. I mean, there's sometimes you just seem like go going good. Everything's going real good. I mean, everything's going real good. And you just, I mean, it's just a big mess. (laughs) Y'all laughing, but it happens in the spirit more than you think it happens in the spirit. The tragedy is many times when they fall, they lay there. There's a good possibility if Sister Garnett's grandmother had had some help when she fell rather than laying there. How many days? Three days. She fell and she couldn't get up. Three days later, pneumonia and different things set in. By the time they got her to the hospital, she passed away just a few hours later. There'd be a good possibility if somebody would have been there to help her up and get her some help that she'd have still been living today. There's people that are dying spiritually and have died spiritually because so many times we watch them fall, but we're not willing to help them. Oh, that's all right. And the reason some people don't want to help them is because they, they like them better when they're on the ground. You see, when they're foaming at the mouth, they look better. When they're throwing their stuff in the fire, they look better. When Brother Stephen is not here, I look better. When Brother Garnett's going through tragedy and stuff and he's on the ground, man, it makes me look so much better. Don't I look spiritual? No, you look dumb in the spirit because Jesus showed compassion to everybody he come in contact with. 
We can talk about repentance. We can talk about baptism in Jesus' name. We can talk about the infilling of the Holy Ghost. We can talk about how we feel chill bumps up and down our spine. We can run like a, somebody in a marathon. We can leap for joy. We can shout to the top of our voice. We can spell Jesus frontwards and backwards. We can know who the mighty God in Christ is. But if we don't have compassion, uh, we are not him. Uh, we are not like him. Uh, and a matter of fact, we become none of his. I just need some help. I just need some compassion. Don't let me lay there. When I fall, help me get up. When I fall, help me get up. When I fall, raise me back up. Come on, before I help them up, I'm going to tell them why they're there. So just keep on going. Because you destroy somebody before you ever get them up. At least when they fall, they got a wheel to get up. They just need a little help to get up. But if you're going to stand over them and act like some dictator, well, I'm going to tell you where you went wrong. I'm going to tell you which way you turned. You shouldn't have went that way. You should have listened to me. You should have listened to the voice of God. You should have listened to the pastor. You know, Jesus, Jesus doesn't want us doing all that. Jesus doesn't want us getting all these people's faces that's fallen. He just wants us to extend a hand of compassion and help them get back up. What in the world am I going to do? I mean, I need to tell them why they're down there. They already know why they're there. The father already knew at what time the spirit had come into his son. And Jesus never asked another question. He just looked at him and said, listen, if you just have faith, if you can have some faith, if you can just believe that all things are possible through me, then this thing is going to happen. Can I tell somebody in this place tonight that walked in here and you were just a few services from giving up? You had got down and out. You feel like nobody cares in this church. You feel like nobody wants you here. Well, I don't fit in. That's the devil whispering in your ear that you don't fit in. We need to form a committee tonight and call it the Pentecostal Lighthouse Get Up Committee. We need some people that are looking around the building. And when they see someone fall spiritually, don't wait five services. Go head over to them that same night and say, come on, Brother Jackson, let's get up. Come on, we, we've been there too long. Come on, let's get up. Come on, let's praise the Lord together. Come on, let's magnify God together. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus together. Come on, let's praise God together. We need some men and women that just don't stand around and try to judge one another. We need somebody that will help somebody back up. Come on, wouldn't there be some ladies in here? Praise the Lord. Come on, ladies. Lift up your voice. Come on, lift up your voice. I know you're praying tomorrow night, but could you praise the Lord together tonight? Could there be some ladies? Lift up your voice like only ladies can do and praise the Lord. Come on, men, could you lift up your voice like men can do? Come on, would you lift up your voice? You're not going to leave them laying there. Oh, my Lord, we praise you. My Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. I tell you, if it was me, this is what I'd do. It's not you. I think Jesus could have told him a whole lot. Maybe his disciples couldn't perform the miracle not only because of prayer and fasting, but because they didn't have no compassion. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's sometimes in our walk with the Lord that we hinder someone because we just want to know too much about the situation rather than just being a help to the situation. Some folks try to tell me all their business. Oh, wait a minute. There's some things I don't need to know. And there's some things you don't need to tell me. Well, they said they would help me if I told them. Oh, they said they'd help you if you told them. In other words, they're negotiating their help with you. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He didn't 
if they come tell me all your stuff, he already knows it. And this is why the, the, the church of the living God, we don't have to know Sister Garnett's business, and we don't have to know Brother Salt's business, and we don't have to know Brother Walson's business, and we don't have to know Brother Stephen's business, and we don't have to know Brother and Sister Evans's business. All, the only thing that should concern us is if they're down, I'm going to help them get up. I ain't leaving till you get up. I don't care. No, no, don't tell me what you've done. Just I ain't leaving till you get up. Uh, go ahead and repent down here, but I'm not leaving till you get up. You're going to hear me praise God right down here with you. You're still needed. You're still wanted. The church still loves you. The devil is a liar. You're going to make it. Everything's going to be all right. But I, I don't care if the choir's singing. I ain't get up till you get up. I, I, I don't care what's going on. I'm not leaving till you get up. If we had some people with a spirit of compassion and love, what would take? place in the kingdom of God. All right, y'all ready? Well if, well, if he did what he's supposed to, then I would, then he wouldn't be like he is. He said, Jesus, I can tell you right now the man was a dog. I'll tell you why, how I know he was a dog. From what he said in the scripture. He was exhausted, he was tired, he was wore out. He said, if thou canst do anything, have compassion on me. He was just to the point he was tired of telling the story. He was to the point he was tired of having his friends not want to be around him because his son was a lunatic. Him and his wife were just tired. They didn't have friends like some of us have friends. They didn't have go to gatherings because the child would tear up the living room or the child would lose it and just foam at the mouth and throw stuff into the fire there in the home. And so they didn't have any friends. They were just exhausted. They had told their story over and over and over and over and over. And all they got them was less friends. When they come in contact with one, they said he'd be a friend to us. He'd be closer than any brother. They just said, Jesus, if you could do anything, just have compassion on us. There's somebody maybe sitting next to you right now in their spirit. They're thinking, I, you know, I don't, I just, I don't need a whole lot of friends. I, I'm not asking for a whole lot. I, I'm really not asking to be able to jump as high as others can jump. I, I'm not asking for a lot of things. But if I could just have somebody that would sit down here with me and have a little bit of compassion, I believe I could find the strength to get back up. If I just had somebody down here that would say, hey, I'm here to help you. I'm not here to hinder you. I'm here to help you. I don't care what's in your ears. I don't care what color your fingernails are painted. I don't care how long your, your sideburns are. I don't care if your hair is on your collar. I don't care who you were with last weekend. I don't care if you're committing adultery. I don't care if you're committing fornication. I ain't leaving here until you get back up because the only hope we got is for the fallen to get back up. The only hope we got is for the sinner to get back up. That that's all the hope we have. Come on, come on, Brother Carnet. Come on, Brother Carnet. Come on, Brother Carnet. We need a good old red hot devil chasing holiness message. No, we need a good old red hot altar service like we had last Sunday night. And people were taking things and laying them on the altar and saying, I ain't doing this in the year 2024 because the Spirit will do more in one moment than my mouth will do in a lifetime. Can I tell somebody, if you'll just have compassion, oh, the joy that it'll bring somebody else. Hallelujah to God. I wish somebody helped somebody up. I wish somebody reached down and get somebody up. I wish in your spirit you'd say, God, let me have compassion like only you can have. Compassion to reach down and help somebody up. Reach down and pull somebody out of the pit. Reach down and grab them by the hair of their head and pull them out of hell. We don't want anybody lost. We don't want anybody to go to hell. You say, oh, but I've heard they've done this. So what? Who cares what they've done? That's where I'm at. Who cares what they've done? This church in 2024 is going to look like a charismatic church before the year's over. And if you can't handle it, then maybe you need to check up on your Holy Ghost. Because if you start conforming to the ones coming in, I dare to say you ain't got much Holy Ghost. 
Oh, I'm worried about the sisters in the church looking like the world. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, when the sinners come in, the sisters in the church ought to look more like Jesus Christ. And when the brothers come in, the brothers in the church ought to look more like Jesus Christ to let the devil know we ain't running them off with our tongue. We're going to keep them here with our compassion. We ain't driving them away with our spirit of a tongue and judgmental spirit. We're going to reach down and pull them back. Pull them back up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to find me another shirt. Don't leave here and mess another one up. Amen. If you got that kind of spirit, get right here. And if you still want to leave, then go ahead. I understand. But don't take a judgmental spirit that just wants to know everybody's business and ruin somebody that Brother and Sister Eden come from. Because in 2024, they're going to have some family coming to church. Oh, yeah. They're going to have some family prayer. And they're going to come back the next service, and they're going to look the same way. What are you going to do? i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray the Lord move upon Brother Garnett and give him a really good shaking down sermon. How about pray God move on Brother Garnett and give him a good dose of compassion that he might help somebody. Because I've been in this long enough to know now that the Spirit, will, when the Spirit moves and He moves on people, something begins to happen. Something happens when I call your name. 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 Mountains move when I call your name. Mountains move when I call your name. Mountains move when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name. Chains are loosed when I call your name. Chains are loosed when I call your name. Chains are loosed when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name name. Mountains move when I call your name. Mountains move when I call your name. Mountains move when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name. They'll get up when I call your name. They'll get up when I call your name. They'll get up when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name. Mountains move Chains are loose. We break through. Something happens when I call your name. Mountains move. Chains are loose. They break through. Something happens when I call your name. When you call his name. When you call his name, when you call his name, just because you get down there with him doesn't mean you have fallen. It just means you're going to let him know, I'm not leaving you here by yourself. I know you've had a hard life. I don't know when the devil come in that boy. I don't know when that spirit come into that child. But Jesus said, oh, I'm going to deliver him today. And he spoke that spirit out of that boy to the point that the devil said, I'm going to have one more time with him. And he wreaked his body. Body, and he tore that child's body to the point that when that demon come out, it left the boy laying there to the, to the point that the crowd said, the boy is dead. But Jesus knew in his heart and in his mind and in his spirit that the boy was not dead. The devil was just trying to leave an impression with those looking around that Jesus was not who he said he was. So Jesus went over to the boy and what did he do? He showed compassion and help. He just just reached down and he picked the boy up. One of the greatest revivals this church to ever see is when the saints of God get the spirit. I ain't walking by them. I'm going to pick them up. I'm not leaving them laying there. I'm going to pick them up. I'm not going another step. I'm going to.
just seek God for the Holy Ghost. Raise your hand way up high. When you sought him for the Holy Ghost, some of you didn't seek long. Praise God. You were believers. Like me, I was unbelievers. Would you seek God for the Holy Ghost? There'd be one on this side. There'd be one on this side. There'd be one standing right straight in your face, spitting all in the top of your forehead. There'd be one behind you with a hand pressed right tight against your back. This one right here would say, hang on. This one over here would say, let go. This one right here, you didn't know what they were saying. They were just screaming so much, spitting in your face. One, 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 one lady would take a handkerchief and feel this hand. So you knew by then snot was running or spit was flowing. And so you'd wipe. And they wouldn't let your hands down. They'd hold your hands up till you couldn't hold them no more. When you quit praying for the Holy Ghost at some point, say, God, just deliver me from this. They wouldn't let you go. You know why? They wanted us to have the Holy Ghost. But after you get it, and you fall. Ain't nobody to the left. Ain't nobody to the right. Ain't nobody screaming at you, get up before you die. Oh, but here they come. I think we need to change it. If we're going to encourage people to receive it, we ought to encourage people to get up. Come on, that's right. Come here, Brother Paul Macklin. Come here, help me. Come here, Brother Jackson. Come here, help me. Come on. Come on, quick. Come on, run up. Come on, Brother Stephen. Come here and help me. Come on, Brother Stephen. Come on. Come on. Come on up here. Fall and get on down. Hit the ground. Thank you, Jesus. I do a better job than you do. We got to have one on the front, one on the left. One on the right, come on, get over there. Don't get him up, don't get him up. You got to have a willpower. Come on, no, stay right there. Come on, come on, we're going to encourage him for a minute. Get on up, Brother Stephen. Come on, in the name of Jesus, get on down there, not yet, too quick. In the name of Jesus, you can do it. In the name of Jesus, it's going to be all right. If we're going to encourage them through, get the Holy Ghost, we ought to encourage one another to get up. In other words... Stay up here with me. If we're going to encourage them to receive the Holy Ghost, we ought to encourage them to worship. We ought to encourage them to praise. We ought to encourage them to run. We ought to encourage them to get up. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I wish I had about five more minutes. 721. Y'all be seated. Y'all stay right here with me. Two of you sit over in them chairs. Come on. The Lord. Amen. Amen. Get up. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm, on, I'm not leaving till you get up. Some folks will spend more time trying to get a horse up than they will a soul. Well, they ate something they shouldn't have ate, and now they floundered in their own. We can't leave this horse till we get it up. Well, you know, that spiritual person has got something they shouldn't have been chewing on and it's caused them to fall. But we sometimes like them there more than we do us. God forbid one of these musicians fall. Oh, God help us. Oh, Lord. God forbid the preacher fall, the pastor fall. The pastor fall, he's done. I don't care what he is over. There's folks standing in line want his job. I mean, they're just, he's just, Musician elder, don't oh if an elder falls, look at her. I told you it wasn't like real as they said it was. Uh-huh. You hear, hear all about it now. Somebody gets baptized, you, you hear about it for about three hours. You let the same young lady make a mistake, you hear about it for three months. God, give us the spirit we can help people up and don't talk about it. God, give us the spirit we can get somebody up and don't spread gossip and rumors about somebody. God, help us we can get somebody up and don't tell everybody else about what. Listen, if somebody's going to confide in you, that don't mean you tell everybody in the church what's going on. You say, well, so-and-so needs to know. I know this person over here and this person over here and this one here in the church.
church, they know everything going on. That's because they nosy, 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 nosy. I don't find one scripture where Jesus was nosy. Matter of fact, when somebody wanted something from Jesus, they came to him. He didn't go looking in everybody else's business. When you want something bad enough, you can go to where Jesus is and he can fix it. So you better quit taking all your troubles to a bunch of nosy people, self-righteous folks that just want to see you fall and lay there because they don't want to jump and they don't want you to jump. They don't want to shout. They don't want you to shout. They don't want a victory. They don't want you to have victory. They just want to lay down in their own misery and slime and glory. But I wish I had a few apostolics help me preach for a few minutes right here. I know that I know the internet world may not like it, but the bottom line is you can say you're apostolic, you can have hair that drags the floor and dresses that drag the floor, but if your tongue stretches from here to Vietnam with gossip, you ain't nothing more than a lying satanic spirit from hell. Come on, somebody help me up. Come on, I need some help. I just, if you can do anything, just help me. If you can do anything, just help me. I need a little compassion right here. I need a little help right here. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel it like fire shut up in my bones. I feel the Holy Ghost and fire. Come on, Brother Garnett, help me up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Sister Edwards, help me get up. Come on, Sister Spade, help me get up. Come on, Sister Sutton, help me get up. Come on, Brother Sister Edwards, help me get up. Come on, Brother Luke Garnett, help me up. Come on, everybody, help me get up. Come on, Brother Lee, Wally, I'll help me. Come on, Tiffany, help me get up. Come on, Sister Griffin, we just got to help some people get up. The church ain't going to be as strong as it needs to be if we leave all the fallen. We got to help somebody up. We got to have some compassion and get somebody up. We got to stand ahead of fellowship and help somebody up. Come on, Sister Powell, just help us up. Come on, Brother Carter, help us get up. Come on, Brother Pink, help me up. Come on, I know they're sinners. I know the world says leave them there. I know the church world says they're not good enough, but they're just screaming, have a little compassion, have a little love. We just need a little help. Let's see. Let's have all the brothers come over here. All the sisters start about right here and go that way. That might be easier than that. Come on. Come on. Come on. Something happens. Come on. Let's get all the brothers. I know this is old fashioned right here. The brothers got one side. The sisters got another side. We may all end up together here in a minute, but it's all right. Amen. We're going to be safe right here. Brothers and sisters. Now I want you to hook up with somebody. Brothers and sisters. Amen. You ought to feel comfortable enough to just take your hand, brother's hand or your sister's hand and just raise it high to heaven. Now listen to me. Listen to me. I want to tell you right now, you have got, somebody has got the hand of someone right now that all they need is a little help. Some of you brothers got somebody by the hand right now they just, they just need a little help. Brother Jackson, they just need a little help. That's all they need. They're not fighting the holiness. They just they just need a little help. They, 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 they don't, it's not they don't want to clean up. They just need a little help.
give it to him. Just begin to praise God. Just begin to magnify God. Can I tell you the Holy Ghost that you feel because you are connected will go to the person you're connected to. That means in the next 30 seconds, everybody in here connected to somebody. It's going to be a chain reaction. You can't stop it. I said, hello, shut up. You can't stop it. When the Holy Ghost gets to moving, go ahead and take somebody by the hand. Don't leave them by themselves. Don't leave them by themselves. Just a little help. Come on, just a little help. That's all he needs. It's not somebody's falling and can't get up. It's just... Somebody grab Brother Cole's hand. Come on, somebody grab Brother Power, Brother. Brother Andy Spade, somebody grab him by the hand. It's not that they've sinned. It's not that they've, they've turned to walk away. There's just some people that...
Take somebody else by the hand. Take somebody else by the hand. Come on, brothers. Take somebody else by the hand. Lift it up high to heaven. You say, I'm tired. Go sit down and take somebody by the hand. Just take some. They just need a little help. They just need a little help. That's all they need. They haven't quit. They haven't given up. They just need a little help. Everybody needs a little help. Everybody in the building just needs a little help. 